So let's make another new sprite. Down here. And we can call this Sprite House Tiles. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to turn our grid on, which will show us a 16 by 16 grid. The way tile sets work is that they pull from a sprite and they will pull it in blocks. So each one of these things will be a different tile that we will be able to pick up and place in our room. Tile sets always start with their first tile blank, so we can just go ahead and discard this one. In fact, a lot of times I like to just put a red block there or something like that, just, just so I know not to that this is uncharted territory. I don't belong here. This is going to end up being a very tiny tile set. I'm going to end up importing another one that I worked on before. I'll show you that one, but right now I'm just going to walk you through making one yourself. The kind of ideas you might want to put into it. So first, let's say the background color that we want to do is maybe not a maybe not a black, but maybe like a very a very dark color. Let's do like a, a kind of darkish purple. We'll put this here to have that. Now we want to make a tile where we can make, the, we'll say this is the walls and let's do a color. Let's do this nice pink. This will be very similar to the one that I import and I'll, I'll show you that one so you can copy it if you want to. So that's a really basic tile set. Let's, uh, get out of here. Now we actually need to create the tile set asset. This is currently just a sprite. And so to make the tile set, we can exit out of here. We can go over to our tile sets folder, right click, create an asset, go down to tile set. Surprise, surprise. So here we can select our sprite, go into the sprite folder, select this right here. Everything here should be set up perfectly fine. You can change a lot of the properties of it, like how wide and tall you want the actual tiles to be, but everything should be perfect for us right now. So we can actually exit out of this. Oh, actually, let's name it. We'll name this TS House Tiles, or just TS House, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. So we can go back into our room, and over here, the only two layers we have is an instance layer for our objects, and we have a background layer, which is just this black box here. Eh. So let's go to the bottom of this box here, and we can add a new tile layer. And now we have a tile layer. It's under the instance layer currently, which is what we want. You can move tile layers around. You can move all layers around like this, but we're gonna keep it under the instances because we don't want it to show up on top of the player. So, we click on our tile layer, go down here to the tile layer properties, select the tile set we want to use, and now we can place stuff around. So, I'm going to start with our our dark color, our wall color. So, I'm just going to use this square tool, fill it up. I could have used a little paint can, but I didn't. Um, sue me. Let's go to the pen so I can select one at a time. And actually, you know what, before we do that, let's go back to our instance layer, and we can just go ahead and get rid of these walls. So I'm just holding a shift and dragging to select multiple things at once, and then just the delete key. So back to our tile layer. I can now add tiles where I want. I can draw them in. So let's make this like a, uh, let's make a little room here. Very tiny room. And we'll have a little path that goes into another little tiny room. We can use these to outline this to make it look a little bit nicer. So now you see kind of what the point of uh, how tile sets work. You probably knew that already, but I said it anyways. Okay, so this looks a little nicer. It's still pretty plain, but whatever. We can go back to our... Actually, we need to add some walls back in. But before we do that, we can go back to our workspace and open up our wall object. So right now it is checked as visible, which means when the game runs, it will actually show up. If we uncheck this, then our walls will not actually show up whenever we run the game, which is what we want now that we have a tile set that shows us where the walls are and stuff. We don't necessarily want these big blue walls to just show up on their own. So let's do this. Let's actually add another instance layer 
and we will call this walls. The benefit of having this on a separate layer is that whenever we are done placing our walls, we can turn the layer invisible ourselves anyways, just so it's not mucking up the view. So let's go back to our assets up here, grab our object wall. I'm going to turn this grid back on so that way our walls are snapping properly. And I am just going to outline this room with our walls. Okay, so I placed all my walls here and now I can just turn this layer invisible. So it's not bothering me. They're still going to be there. It's just not visible to me in the editor and they won't be visible when you run the game. Uh, another little thing you can do that would actually probably be really helpful is what I always do. In our walls, even if we can hide them like this, it's still kind of weird having them to be completely opaque and cover up the screen like this. So we can go back into our wall sprite and we can turn down the opacity. We can make it see-through. You could either pick a color and then go into that color and turn the alpha down, which is the same as the opacity, or uh, we could go to the layer that it's on and change the opacity here. And I'm gonna change it to about maybe like half or a little bit less, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a little see-through, that helps. So, you see this way, if I'm putting a wall somewhere... Uh, if I'm putting a wall anywhere in the room, you can see you can still see through it, which is, which is very helpful. So let's hide this layer again and run the game and see how everything's doing. Okay, so... Looking good! Looking good! Okay, but uh, this is still a little bit boring just because it's such a small little area here and the camera doesn't move because the room is too tiny. So let's make the camera follow the player so that way we can make a little bit bigger room. Let's exit out of here. We can go ahead and make our room a little bit bigger. So we'll go back to the room properties, which I minimized down here. So bring that back up. You can resize any of these windows by clicking between them. And now let's change the width to, let's just say like 500 by 400. So now we have all this space to work with. I can close those room settings. I might want to make a new little tile path here. So back into our viewports and cameras, go back to our viewport zero that we set everything up in in the beginning. And in the beginning, you probably noticed this object following. So we can select any object here for the camera to follow. And obviously we want to select our player. Horizontal border and vertical border basically mean how far does the object that the camera is following, how far does that have to be from the edge of the camera to move it. So 32 and 32 would basically mean that the camera only starts following the player once the player is about this far away from the camera and then it will come with it. And we don't want that. We want it to just stay centered on the player. So really we could just make that half of our camera view, 144 and 108. Now you could also, you could just set these to like a thousand or something and it would it would be the same thing. So horizontal and vertical speed, just keeping them at negative one means that it's just gonna be following the player as fast as the player is going. So we're good, let's close out of that. And before I forget, let's open up our walls again and I'm gonna get this wall out of the way because I actually wanna, I actually wanna move down here. Okay, all done. So hide this again and run the game one more time. All right, moment of truth. Hey, look at that. The camera's falling and everything. When we get to the edge of the room, the camera doesn't go any farther than the room is. So perfect. All right. Okay, so this is the tile set that I'm gonna be using from now on. Uh, if you wanna pause and copy it or whatever, you totally can. If you're wondering why I didn't just link a folder that has the assets in it for you to download, uh, I was too lazy, but really more than anything, just it's good practice to just imitate stuff that you see. Just copy it. You can change it however you want. You can change colors. It doesn't even have to be like this. This is actually a pretty inefficient tile set. You see all these these spaces that I've left. It's because I, I made it really fast and I didn't plan it out very well, but regardless, uh, if you want to use it, you totally can.
Oh, and before I forget to mention, in tile sets, once you have started using them, it, Game Maker counts it as like tile 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So basically what happens is if you resize a tile set sprite after it's already in use, then what's going to happen is that order is going to get all out of whack and your tiles are just going to show up in, in the totally, totally wrong places. You can always make your sprite taller, but you can never make it wider. So j just keep that in mind. Okay, so I've kind of gone back and used my new tile set, and you can kind of see what I did here, which is like the darkest color is sort of just the outside of the rooms, and then there's the lighter dark color, which is kind of like the walls a little bit, and then the pink, which is the floor. And now I'm just going to add a couple more things just to make it look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more lively. So I got like a staircase type thing over here. So here's the left side of the staircase. We can pull that down, and the right side. Now we got a little bit of elevation going on. We can add our door here for our room, and then maybe a little, uh, a, like a little carpet thing in the middle of this. Got a picture frame. Put a couple of those on the wall. Look at that! Look how much stuff you can do with just just tiles, and how cool it looks. And then uh, once you just put your walls back around, then you have something pretty good looking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make some other objects, like maybe a dresser, maybe a coat rack, something like that, that you can place in your level, and then your player can walk in front and behind it, and it adds a bunch of depth. 